Welcome to the Trial Site News Roundup. Today on our episode, we will be discussing the UK-based meta-analysis by Dr. Tess Lowry, which has now been peer-reviewed and published, and is suggesting that ivermectin is a key public health weapon in the war against COVID-19. Then, the Novavax traditional vaccine is now bringing imminent competition to the genetic-based vaccines currently under emergency use authorization. And so, from Trial Site News, I'm Adrian, and the News Roundup starts now. Now, currently here in the US, official US guidelines from both the FDA and the NIH as of the filming of this episode are as follows. First, the FDA has cautioned against the use of ivermectin for use against COVID-19, saying that they have not approved ivermectin for use in treating or preventing COVID-19 in humans. The NIH has a softer stance on the subject of ivermectin with a more neutral tone. They are neither for nor against the use of the drug, saying that there is insufficient data to recommend either for or against the use of ivermectin for the treatment of COVID-19. They suggest that results from adequately powered, well-designed, and well-conducted clinical trials are still needed to provide more specific, evidence-based guidance on the role of ivermectin in the treatment of COVID-19. So. The meta-analysis, which has been recently published in the peer-reviewed American Journal of Therapeutics, Dr. Tess Lowry, an expert in medicinal evidence, along with other experts in population health and gastroenterology out of the United Kingdom, conducted a comprehensive meta-analysis involving the certainty of evidence using an approach known as GRADE, which led to the focus on 24 ivermectin-centered randomized controlled trials involving 3,406 participants. The authors concluded, based on their extensive review, that ivermectin reduced the risk of death compared with no ivermectin. Now, Dr. Lowry and team posits that their meta-analysis confirmed via trial sequential analysis employing what was the same Dersimonian layered method behind the unadjusted analysis. The authors also ran their findings against a trial sequential analysis employing the Biggerstaff Tweedy method. They found low certainty evidence that ivermectin prophylaxis, meaning preventative method, lowered infection association with SARS-CoV-2, which of course is the virus behind COVID-19, by an average of 86%. Also, the team's findings reveal that the evidence for secondary outcomes, such as efficacy associated with need for mechanical ventilation, is less compelling. However, effective estimates for improvement and deterioration point to the positive impact of ivermectin use. The authors also found little safety risk, as reports of severe adverse events were rare among the reviewed studies. Now, this study published in the peer-reviewed American Journal of Therapeutics suggests a moderate certainty evidence indicating a substantial reduction in COVID-19-related deaths would be a feasible outcome with the use of ivermectin. The study results mirror what we here at Trial Site News have observed from Bangladesh and India to Peru and Argentina, from Israel and Nigeria to the ICON study in South Florida and population-wide public health initiatives using ivermectin from Mexico City to Uttar Pradesh in India, that there is now overwhelming data that this generic drug used as an antiparasitic treatment should be considered on at least an emergency basis as another tool in the medical tool chest to fight SARS-CoV-2. Now, Trial Site News spoke to Dr. Lowry, and she told us that they are overjoyed to have the product of months of hard work finally published. And so, we here at Trial Site News would suggest that perhaps health regulators and Apex Research Institutes should revisit their assessment of this drug. Now, US-based Novavax reported recently that its COVID-19 vaccine candidate called NVX-CoV-2373, or Coronavax, demonstrated 100% protection against moderate and severe disease, and 90.4% overall efficacy, keeping this investigational product competitive with both mRNA-based vaccine products under emergency use authorization, as well as superior to the Johnson & Johnson adenovirus-based vaccine which is also authorized for deployment in the USA on an emergency basis. 
Now, NVX CoV-2373 is a recombinant nanoparticle protein-based experimental vaccine and could become the first vaccine available in the USA that does not use a gene therapy-based vaccination method. Now, the potential vaccine met its clinical trial endpoints during the PREVENT-19 Pivotal Phase 3 clinical trial, which this study included 29,260 participants across 119 trial site organizations in both America and in Mexico. The PREVENT-19 study evaluated the efficacy, safety, and immunogenicity of the Novavax candidate and focused on the recruitment of study participants who are epidemiologically more likely to be impacted by the disease like the elderly minorities and those with comorbidities. So let's take a deeper dive at what is NVX CoV-2373. As I mentioned, it is also referred to by the trade name Coronavax. This perfusion protein vaccine candidate is based on the company's proprietary nanoparticle technology known as Matrix M, an adjuvant that boosts immune response, thus triggering greater amount of SARS-CoV-2 neutralizing antibodies. The candidate product is based on an engineered baculovirus, which is an insect virus that does not infect animals which includes a modified SARS-CoV-2 spike protein gene. This recombinant insect virus then infects and introduces SF9 moth cells, which then cause the spike protein to be produced by these cells and display the protein on their cell membranes. The production process then involves the harvesting and assembly of these cell membranes displaying this spike protein onto a synthetic lipid nanoparticle about 50 nanometers across, each displaying up to 14 spike proteins. Now, using proprietary formulation methods, Novavax then combines this vaccine candidate with their patented Matrix M adjuvant, which stimulates the migration, activation of antigen-presenting cells at the injection site, while boosting antigen presentation via local lymph nodes, which all works to augment immune response, thus aiding the immunized person to produce sufficient antibodies against SARS-CoV-2. So, the next question then is, how well does the experimental vaccine work against variants? Well, according to Yale Medicine, thus far the candidate demonstrates 86.3% efficacy in the UK, which is one location of the circulating B1.17 variant. Yale reported that the experimental vaccine has been 55.4 efficacious thus far in a phase 2B trial targeting the B1351 variant among the HIV negative study volunteers, according to a Novavax press release. This then leads us to another challenging reality, which has been the slow uptake of vaccination across America caused by what is known as vaccine hesitancy. According to Our World Data, U.S. vaccination rates have crawled to a near standstill and are now stuck at approximately 43.8% of the domestic population willing to accept vaccination. Now, this slowdown is in part caused by safety concerns. Across families and social networks, there are stories of post-COVID vaccination health issues, and this contributes to vaccine hesitancy, as does the government's obfuscation of challenges and issues. That type of behavior serves to reduce trust, as opposed to boosting trust levels and improving faith in the vaccine enterprise. And that, my friends, brings our episode to a close once more. As always, thank you so much for joining us on our program today. From Trial Site News, I'm Adrian, and I will see you all next time.